But yeah, nothing else. I mean, we're chugging right along here. I'm going to jump right into our integration this week, which is not Bitwarden. It's Vault Warden. And so today we're going to go into the application interface. If you have not seen it, we do have an introduction episode out. Or I don't know what we called it, an overview episode already out yeah. there. Um, so today we're just going to dive into kind of the application interface. And truthfully, it's really over a handful, a handful of items and uh, filters really on that, that home page, that front screen, just kind of. I want to talk about how I use it and how just kind of what kind of stuff's out there on that interface. Um, so the one thing uh, I broke it down here. So there's vault items and there's filters. Uh, there's also a couple other settings that you can look at and navigate through. I don't have, I, I need to go back through and populate them on the actual show notes, but today I really want to talk about the vault items and filters just because I found them. Very interesting, and I've used them in different ways. Uh, so there are four different types of items that can be created in Vault Warden. It's a login, a card, an identity, and a secure note. Honestly, when I say those, they're probably very self-explanatory. Um, you know, a login would be like a login for a website. A card would be like for a credit card or debit card. Uh, identity is for an identity, like a personal identity, which kind of an interesting one if you ask me if you're holding multiple identities maybe you want to uh, separate those use those in that way and then secure note which is kind of my personal favorite after login which is just uh you know give this thing a title and dump in some text and you're off <laughs> so it's very plain um in the sense that it's just a name in a box essentially when you create an item it's could be one of the easiest user interfaces. I think that's why I love this application so much. If you don't have a password manager, it, I, I, I'd question how you get along. Do you rem Is that what you do? Do you remember passwords? Is that your job to remember passwords? Uh, I think in the overview episode, we said there were 273. The average person has 270 passwords or something like that. Logins, at least. Yeah, logins, which... If you have the same password, just think about having to go through and change your password for every single one of those. I can't. But getting back to Vault Warden here, it's very easy. So when you log in, immediately you're dropped. It's like the top right of the page. There's an add item button. And when you add the item, you can select what you know what type of item is this. Uh, and then with the login, you get the name of the item, the folder, the username, the password. The You can actually add authenticator keys, TOTP keys. Um, and then you have the option for uh, URI and then match detection, which is pretty, pretty awesome, pretty sweet uh, for, you know, how do you want to match um, subdirectory or do you, how do you want a domain match uh, this entry? Uh, and then along with it, you get notes and you can also add custom fields. Uh, then actually the last one, which is very kind of important as you start to get into organizations and, you know, differentiating your passwords versus shared passwords you get the ownership and i blacked them all out on the uh pictures i put on the uh book stack instance but essentially with this you can choose your personal account which ends up being uh for me like my email and then for you can also set it to like an organization so say andrew and i have an organization out there uh compositional enterprises and I want to say, hey, look, we, you need this password. I need this password. We both want to be able to modify this item, check this item out. Um, basically, we can say the organization owns this, so we all have access to it. Login is by far the most used node, that, without a doubt. I mean, honestly, I think I, I probably have 350 entries in my personal books or my personal vault warden, and I would say probably. 325 330 are logins just of various kinds moving forward here uh the new uh, the next one honestly which i have never used was card adding a credit card so you can add the name you can add the folder you can add card holder name the brand so that drops down like visa mastercard american express uh the number on it expiration date the year the cvv have you real quick here while you're editing everything have you used the card yeah this is absolutely something i can talk on for sure yeah go for it because i have i i was looking through it today and i had not used i i i, I it's my own instance but i'm still uh kind of skeptical on putting my card information into 
the website, which is such an odd, like, I don't know what to call it, paradox, because I put all my other, lo- you know, I put my bank login information in there. It's like, what? why not put the card in there? So, yeah, go for it if you want to talk on it. Sure. So, what I use this for mainly is all my virtual account numbers. With my, so I have a, a city double cash card. And one of the benefits to that card is the ability to generate basically dynamic credit card numbers. Those credit card numbers are tracked by city and they all link back to my one account. So they're all branching off my one account on my statement. uh, I can see if one of these virtual numbers was used for a purchase. And the last, the last really cool thing about it is that it, restricts one card to one vendor right so there's there's those those couple things going on there which which make virtual cards just so useful That's awesome right yeah. because you, yeah. you were talking about you were talking about think about how many passwords you have out there on the right. internet right right how many times have i put in my credit card somewhere on the, on internet. the internet right to get something right so if if you're not using PayPal and and that would be the other alternative, right? That that kind of does that, but that's still going to be your central point of failure. What you would do is you'd take these different credit card numbers and you would put them in different different vendors. So for instance, I have a recurring subscription to C4 for the energy drink, right? So I I have a separate credit card for them and every month it gets billed. And I see that on my account, and it comes through that separate virtual account number. Um, similarly, I have one with Dollar Shave Club. And every month, they ping the credit card that's on file, and they send me the that month's box. So these are, these are used uh, over a period of time. Uh, you, can, you can put time constraints on them. You can put dollar limits on them. Or you can just use them as, as one-offs, right? And in that case, I would get them and I would use it for, uh, what, what was that? A, 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 where I got the shirt, uh, Poshmark. Yeah. Right? Uh, I, I have never bought anything on there and I don't really plan on buying anything there after this, right? So I generated a virtual account number, no time limit, right? And, and no dollar limit. I'm like, this is just a one-time use thing so i put that card number into to poshmark and it, it it connects right back to my regular account so it shows up on my statement along with all of my other purchases it says by the way you know it was it was a virtual account number that was actually ran here's a last for that number uh, so it, it it can tell me when that's been used now the benefit of this is if that gets breached for any reason then it's not my credit card that I now have to go change everywhere and they can charge anything to, right? They right. have a virtual it's, account number that's virtually useless because it's, you know, it's it's only for that one time. It's only linked to the one vendor. And if there's no time specified on it, it's only linked, I believe, to that one transaction, right? So it's like a, it's a single use kind of thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I didn't even know. Yeah. It's like a password manager for your credit card. It's it's amazing. You know, it'll it'll generate a separate CVV. It'll g- generate you know expiration. Will you add those then to Bit or Vault Warden then? For my reoccurring ones, yes, I do. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. That that's. Um, and then if I was smart, what I could do is I could look at them and see when they were expiring. And I could know about that beforehand and go and renew them, but I don't do that yet because I'm lazy. So that's awesome, though. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. The virtual mm-hmm. cards and putting those in there. I don't use. Unfortunately for me, I I kind of just track everything as it comes in as I purchase it, and then it it all ends up on one card, one statement. But I, and I know had any issues some thus cards far. do this and some cards don't. Like uh, Capital One does it. Uh, some Amex cards do it. There's also privacy.com uh, where they run that same type of service for you where you give them the card number, you tell them how much you want to you know, put on your account, and then you can have multiple cards on on that. And, and so there's several different ways to do that, uh, but that would require that you track cards. So uh, oh, and then right. and then also this is this comes in handy you know if you do lose a card right you have all the information there so you can call and cancel pretty quick now that's not to say that banks aren't pretty 
willing to work with you without having that card number, right? If you call and say it's been stolen, but it's just a nice to have uh, just in case. So, um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't mind throwing it up there. I'm glad you had that anecdote because I, I was really searching. I was like, I was thinking to myself, Oh my, what, well, you know, for me at least, oh, I have not added a card into vault warden before. I can't imagine yeah. why I would either. I only have, you know, a handful. Well, and this, this may be a good, good time to to divert really quickly into you know how vault warden actually works like what what the security posture is right and 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 how that how that is um now i have a bit warden application on my phone um on my browser and then there's obviously the web one um and so there's there's a couple things that you're doing when you store your your passwords yeah and i think you should explain this to everybody just to get into the nitty gritty because I know you have. Yes, I have. I have. So I am, I am at least qualified to speak on it. Uh, if, if not well spoken on it, I, I, I can at least, I can at least maybe answer some questions. Uh, but the, the way I like to break the way Bitwarden uh, as the upstream version, as well as Vault Warden, how they, how they do their encryption is that everything, first of all, everything is on client side. So that's that's very important to note, is that uh, at no point does your actual password go up to the server. Uh, and in fact, what happens is at no point does any of your login information go up to the server. And that, and that seems very far-fetched, right? Uh, but keep in mind, this is a very closed circuit application, right? It doesn't need to expose to an API. It has it doesn't, to be. It doesn't need to work with anything else. It's just you and the server. So realistically, the server is simply an object storage. You could just think of it as like a Dropbox or a NextCloud that can that can hold a file for you, right? With a little bit of syntactic sugar sprinkled on top. What it allows for the client side to do is all the sharing and the custom requests and... Uh, and quicker, quicker storage um, than I think you would if, if it was all sort of one blob. Because if it was all sort of one blob, there wouldn't be any advantage to that over like just storing a key pass blob somewhere, right? The change, or the the difference happens is where you start having these these clients that can that can connect to the client, or to, excuse me, the clients that can connect to the server from different. Uh, devices from your phone, from your browser, what have you, and then you can use those clients um, that that use the backend server. So the the server does come in handy above and beyond the the simple file storage, but the clients are the things that do all the heavy lifting. Because first of all, they never send not even your your login password up to the server. So when you're actually logging into the server, uh, it's it's simply well, I say simply, it's right. in a cryptographically secure ma- manner requesting the the blob that it expects to be up there, right? Because it takes your username and password, and that's actually more so like the title, the name, if you would, of your blob of encrypted passwords and stuff that it retrieves. So like if I, if I try to log into an instance and I can't, it's not that the server said, oh, this user isn't here. It said, I don't have any blob up there that's identified with that. And and I can't say that, oh, did you mean this user or right. it's a wrong password? No. It could be either or both because it doesn't know any of that. It, it isn't just... getting sent any of that, right? So what you would have to do at, at that point uh, is make sure you got your master username and, and password uh, encrypted or well correct and then then you send that up and what bitwarden will do is it will find the data you're looking for and then send it directly back to your device where your device does all the encryption or decryption and then starts to display passwords and users and yada 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 right and it can send that down incrementally as well so it can be a little bit more intelligent about it but in essence there's nothing on your device or well on the server excuse me that would be really accessible the the point of attack that you're looking at is over the network traffic 
which once again, we're encrypted with HTTPS and we went over that and, and how that works and the advantages and, and the disadvantages of that. It will not stop you from being scammed, right? It, it will not stop you from putting in the wrong Bitwarden server address, uh, but it will protect you if you have the right one to make a secure connection. So the, the attack vector at that point is either over the network or on the client, which at that point, that's there's a lot more things that you can do. You got a lot, well, you got a lot bigger problem, right? If it's on your, you're hacked on your laptop. All in all, yeah, I don't, I don't feel any, because I'm, I'm doing everything I can to secure my personal devices and, and really totally at that point, it's like, well, what are you going to do, right? I would, and, and if you look at any security professional's posture on this, their posture is, it's a lot scarier to have a password breach because they happen a lot more frequently. Like when's the last time you personally got breached versus when's the last time a major corp- corporation got breached? They get breached like every week. Right? right. So your chances are much, much better that they're going to get popped. And you better hope that the password you used for their stuff is not the password you use for your bank or for other 200 other things. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun doing that. That's a two days work right there. That's a weekend. Exactly. Yeah. If, if not longer. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I understand the arguments against having a password manager. I just think given the risk reward scenario, fully, fully thinking that through leads you to only one conclusion. And that is that it is beneficial to have a password manager. What, what we're talking about here is defense in depth, right? And, and that's right. something we've, we've talked about before. I mean, all right, let's say someone does get your passwords, right? What's the next step? Well, let's start with two-factor, right? And uh, two-factor is something you've, you've talked about, Bitwarden stores too. I mean, is that something you've you've used in there yet? Have you been I have not, have you? That? So I have, yeah. I wanted to ask you if you have. I have not. I want to switch. I have a lot of phone stuff out there. It's on my phone. I go, what happens when my phone breaks? What happens when it bri- when it breaks? Yeah. it's I'm done. I need to switch it over, and I saw it's out there. I have not used it yet. I want to ask if you, it sounds like you have. Yeah, and it works like any other any other two factor, right? Whether it's on my yeah. phone or whether it's on my browser, right? Right next to my username and password is your your you know your two factor auth code because once you scan that QR code, right, the QR code is an initial state, and then a programmatically determined you know it's incrementation, gonna... right? Uh, right? So. So all you got to do is is grab that initial state and then figure out how it's generating the next one. You just keep going from there and it can continue to calculate it. And so, you know, it it fits into that uh, paradigm quite nicely. That's awesome. I did not realize that was out there because I've been using, you know, whatever authenticator or whatever app is out there to do those one, you know, yeah. time-based one-time passwords uh, for two-factor. And I keep, my phone is just, getting older and older and i'm like okay i need you know yeah i gotta i got i need to put i need to i need to either back these up or you know and i I always do i have the secure coat you can get the recovery or whatever but i'm thinking to myself all right that's no fun that's a day wasted right there of going you know and it's only seven or eight services of going through but it's seven or eight services i gotta re-log in do like all right how do you want to get this like recover and it's like all right what do you want to do now it's like all right change it to the next device or whatever rather than i didn't i didn't realize it was out there on bitwarden that i could do that yep they've already thought about that it's it's totally worth it too so because yeah, you're right. I mean, your your single point of failure. You want to push your single point of failure as far away from you as you can. Let's let's just put it right. that way. There's always going to be someone that could go catastrophically wrong. You want your single point of failure to be like the annihilation of a continent. You're you're going to want to push it as far away from you as you can. And this is just another way to do that. Get it off your phone. Get it onto a service that multiple devices can access, so you don't have to be concerned about one going down. Period. I'm definitely gonna have to set that up. I also was yeah. looking at. Uh, I had. I already made a note on privacy.com. I was looking at that. I looked at that previously. I don't know why I didn't do it before, but definitely gonna have to check that one out. So before they, uh, City was running a Flash-based client, um, but they had to discontinue that since Chrome Yay. ended their support <laughs> of it. So now I can bring it up just regularly, and it's it's a lot easier. Before I was having to do a lot of hacky tricks, and it got it got annoying. 
But right now it just pops up in a new browser window. It's like, here's your new virtual account number. Copy, paste, and I'm done. Um, okay. Yeah, sweet. Okay, here's one. Have you used the identity? Uh, no. No, no. This I, I have not. I, I, me neither. I don't see like a real use for it. it. The one use case I thought of or could think of was for kids. You know, maybe you have some kids and you don't want to lose that documentation, you know, lose that documentation uh, for them. Um, along with, you know, after you add the item, you can attach a file to it. And, you know, that's where you just scan the passport, scan or not even passport, scan the social and scan the birth mm-hmm. certificate. And that way you have that information for them. But past that, I don't I, I have not put any information. I have not created an identity before. Hopefully, I never have to. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, there's there's no reason for me, not really. But you do use secure notes. Love, love my secure notes. Absolutely. Oh, this is terrible. Um, secure notes I use for Rails keys, which <laughs> it's a file. It, it should be a file. We end up, what, catting the file, just getting some gibberish output, and then I just like, all right, hey, it's out there. <laughs> and then we use uh, some kind of spit. Andrew can tell you about the fancy line termination we used. It's not a file. It's not a line. Per POSIX, it's not a line. Is it a file then? What is it? It's not a file because a file is something that ends in a new line or return character. It ends in end of file, right? And this doesn't it, end no, in end of file. No, it does file. not. It does not even end with end of file. It's a, it's a null terminator. Yeah. Oh, the joys of Ruby. Um, anyway, I love my secure notes. I put all kinds of stuff in secure notes just because it doesn't fall under the, any of the other four categories. It doesn't fall under identity. It doesn't fall under login. It doesn't fall under card. So a lot of my stuff, if I have just you know a name for it and I need to upload an attachment with it, it ends up being dumped in as a secure note yeah which you can upload attachments with this too for better or for worse guess what i end up doing if i need it i search it and it's there yeah so. yeah and, and you know back to what we were talking about before i mean you can't search a black book you can absolutely search a password manager i can't tell you how many times i've gone to a site and bitwarn's like oh by the way you have a login for this site i'm like really yeah okay uh, or or going through all my old passwords like do I have a login to this old server I haven't booted up in three years? It's like, yes, you do. Here it is, right here. Uh, which kind of gets us right into our next item. I was gonna, I'm going to skip over editing. Editing is editing item is pretty easy. The one time or the couple times I have been burned on editing items is I'll just hit X at the top right instead of save, like some kind of moron, some kind of fool. And after I change my password, sure enough, it's all right, here we go. Hit the reset link and I have to reset it because I, <laughs> I didn't save the password. I just closed out of editing the uh, element. I'm sure that doesn't happen to normal people, but for me, that does is something I wanted to bring up that you actually have to hit save. And as well, the the right above the save button, you can see that it says updated, the screenshot, uh, when you're editing it. And when you do change your password, it'll save a history of that password for you. It's out there. I'll tell you what. I haven't gone through that password history, though, or had to go through it. I think I went through once. I, I had to go through it once, but it was there. It was available for me. I was like, all right, that's all I needed you to do. Thanks, bro. Which is pretty sweet. There's a lot more. I'm going to quickly go over filters here. I won't dive into organizations. I feel like that's a topic for another day. There's also some other features out there, like um, have I what is it? have I been pwned? Uh, database dictionary attack check and there are a couple other checks out there and the tool there, there are a lot of tools out there there's um you know updating your information on the actual bitwarden site at instance itself or sorry vault warden instance itself um but wanted to go over filters here real quick just because that's another one that i use uh quite a bit and that's kind of what drops right when you log in there um filters provide a way to look at Different items in your vault based on different categorizations and tag. I, I call them tags. I don't know what they. I, I should have referred to the doc their official documentation for what it's actually called. Uh, collections, I think, is what it is. But I always have. If I'm in a certain scope, I will have a certain set of passwords. I I, I base mine all in folders, which is for better or for worse. I know what what we have. I don't have a lot of folders, but for my home stuff, I have almost everything in some kind of folder somewhere or another. Um, Ditto. the especially big one now has been starting to starting to be AWS with IAM roles and all that stuff. It's like just dumping 
you know, it's like, don't put your root as the same as something that's supposed to log into a server. All right, fine. Um, I have all, our, I have a compositional enterprise folder. Um, so everything dumps into it. So everything gets classified for me in a folder. Everything kind of goes into a folder, you know, there's, you know, banking and then there's whatever miscellaneous that if something really doesn't fall under a category or a folder, uh, but that just is an easy way for me to logically group all the elements within that certain space. Uh, the thing I really like that we do at Compositional Enterprise here is that we have <laughs> our vault passwords. Uh, I wanted to bring it up as a note because <laughs> I think before I didn't have an instance vault password to stored under the collection or under an organization. And so it was out there and it's like, you go to click the collection. It's like, you hit me up. You said, Hey, it, you know, this password is not out there. And I'm thinking to myself, well, hang on. Yeah, it is. It's out there for me. It works for me. Uh, but sure enough, it's not in, it's not shared and it's not under the right collection. So, uh, you know, it's a lot, a lot easier to manage these entries categorized. So it is. Yeah. And, and I can kind of go over how I set up some of our collections um, so it, yeah. it kind of makes sense. So we have we have a couple collections here. Um, actually, I'm going to pull it up. I, I had it up because I had to deploy dev. But um, oh, and one of the funny things is too. So I like have my personal AndrewCZ.com yeah. Bitwarden instance yeah. that I keep the password to log into our compositional enterprises instance uh, in. You and me both. You and me both. So, I have the same same thing running. So I, I go to I go to the the CE site and I'm able to log in using my browser autocomplete <laughs> to, to, from, to open from up the my agencies. other yeah yeah I always found that funny always found that funny uh, but for for CE I I have it I have a couple different collections so first there's the the compositional enterprises one uh, and that's for everything in compositional enterprises yeah right. Um, and then we have rcompose.com. And uh, rcompose is everything for the rcompose instance that we run. Uh, it's specifically for the command center, for Mailgun, for Nextcloud, for, for all of those things. API right? keys, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have the rcompose bot, right? Which we just have a generic bot name that we use on all of our different services, whatever, wherever we have to use it, GitHub. Docker Hub, uh, Matrix. We just call it our Compose Bot because it's it does what we need it to do. So uh, we have all of our logins there categorized under the uh, the third collection uh, that you can see in the the documentation there. And then the last one is Vault passwords. Uh, and then Vault passwords are the instances which are uh, maintained Inter by us internal. Yeah, our internal which instances. we maintain the Vault passwords for. Um, and that's something I'd like to expand on uh, later too. I'd like to do some cool stuff. We can do some cool like two of three, two of three tricks and, yeah. and and some cool crypto there. But uh, something something that we can do down the road. Is there anything else you wanted to add with uh, Vault Warden? I didn't have anything else. I need. I wanted to go over really. I think I'm just gonna bring it back around to, to searching. Honestly, like do it. I, do it. Yeah. I know I categorize things in folders too. I mean, I do the exact same thing if I pull up my personal one, right? And I take a look at my vault. Um, you know, I have my community passwords, which are to all my forums. I have, you know, my home lab, which is all my devices in my home lab, right? Um, I have my services and vendors. So that's, you know, like my Dollar Shave Club, you know, my, my C4 subscription. That's, that's all those logins, right? At the end of the day, what I'm actually doing yep. is I'm either going to that site and using the autofill feature, right? And we can talk about that in everyday usage. Uh, or I'm searching it up looking for a yep. gold password that I forgot. That's exactly right. That's what I do every time. And so as, as long as you just kind of like barf all the names that you could possibly search for in the title or in the in the description or whatever, right? you're going to be able to find it again. And that's a beautiful thing about this. Like I'm never going to forget where a password is or I'm not going to, ever going to misplace it because I know it's going to be in here. It's either in here or it's nowhere. Exactly. The single point. It's the single source of truth. That's what it is. With the distributed points of failure because that's that's the holy grail right there, I guess. I don't have anything else to add. 
I would check out the book stack documentation we have out there. I would honestly just check out an instance, sign up for an instance and check out Bitwarden yourself if you don't have it or if you're not running it. Um, we'd be glad to get you up and running with an instance. So um, if you have any questions, absolutely reach out.